Our first hymn this morning is 457. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, 457. We say together our opening prayer. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There may have been times during this past week that you have said, thought, or done something that you wish you hadn't, or indeed, not done or said something that you wish you had. We come before God, and if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We sit or kneel to confess our sins before Almighty God. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. 
Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and assure us of his eternal love, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our only response to being forgiven by Almighty God is to stand and praise his name. So please stand as we say our sentences together. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. One generation shall praise your works to another. All your works praise you, Lord. They make known the glory of your kingdom. And speak of your power. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let us bless your name for Our second hymn this morning is hymn number 390. I haven't turned up, so I can't tell you what it is. O oh, strength and stay, 390. Oh. We sit to hear our first reading. Again. 
Our second reading this morning is a reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him, and on their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for his arrival. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. You have to have an image in your mind for this one of people walking backwards, or as the Americans would say, but first. So if you have an image of people doing this, with their backside facing in the direction that they're actually walking, but first. Today's gospel is a difficult one. It's confrontational and it doesn't leave much, if any, wiggle room. Stay with your teeth in. Wiggle room. No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. We're either looking forward to the kingdom or we are not. We're either responding to the call of life or we're not. We're either open to the coming future or we're not. Jesus is speaking to us about discipleship and what it means for those who are following him then, the disciples. But ultimately, it speaks to us, too, of our discipleship. Are we made of the right stuff to look forward and not backwards to what we have previously known and held on to? Or do we continue to look forward to what is to come and our part in it? Jesus is calling us into question, and that's never easy, or fun, or comfortable for us. He is calling into question the direction of our life, the values we claim to hold, and how we are living and embodying those values. He is asking us to look at ourselves, rather than the Samaritans in that village on whom we'd like to call down fire from heaven. By Samaritan, I mean those who look, act, and believe differently from us. Those who do not hold our particular religious or political beliefs. 
those who are not from these parts, those to whom we are opposed and in conflict with, for whatever reason. And if you're not sure who your Samaritans are, look at your social media feed and who posts the articles and comments that make you angry. Turn on the TV that you refuse to watch. Picture the face of someone you crush and defeat in those arguments that you play over in your head. Today's Gospel won't let us turn away from the people and situations that are right in front of us, or the future that is coming toward us. Jesus recognises and holds before us the tension in which we live. On the one hand, we say to him, I will follow you wherever you go. On the other hand, we say to him, but first, let me go and dot, dot, dot. You probably know what that's like. I know I do. When have you experienced the when has it left as it felt like you were being pulled in two directions? The way of Jesus and some other way. And in what ways have you said, but first let me? It's easy and simple to follow Jesus in principle. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love your enemy. Welcome the stranger. Visit the sick and in prison. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Give the thirsty something to drink. Turn the other cheek. Forgive not just seven times, but seventy times seven. These are values Jesus holds. That's where Jesus is going. That's the direction in which he has set his face. That's the road to Jerusalem. And it sounds good. Most of us would probably agree with all of those values. It's the road we too have chosen to follow in principle. But it's so much harder and messier to follow Jesus in life than in principle. I'm sure we are all in favour of love, hospitality, forgiveness, non-violence. So we meet the unlovable, the stranger who scares us, the unforgivable act, the one who throws the first punch, or the Samaritan in our life. Then it's a different story, and that story usually begins with, but first. Jesus, however, puts no qualifications, limitations, or exceptions on where he is going, who is included, or what he is offering. He doesn't seem to care who we are, where we are from, what we've done or left undone, whether Labour supporter, Tory supporter, citizen of this country, foreigner, Christian, Hindu, Muslim, black, white, good, bad, Believer, non-believer. It doesn't matter. For him there is no why, no conditions, attached to love, hospitality, forgiveness, or giving. He does not allow for a but first in his life, or the lives of his followers. Because but first, is the way we put conditions on the unconditional. Do we say, yes, I will love the other, but first let me go and see who the other is, whether she or he is deserving of love, whether I like him or her, whether he or she agrees with me and is agreeable to me. Do we say, yes, I will open my door too and welcome the stranger, but first let me go and see who's knocking, 
how different he or she is from me. What she or he wants. What am I risking? Do we say yes? I will forgive another. But first let me go and see if she or he has acknowledged her or his wrongdoing. He's sorry for what they did and has promised to change. Do we say yes? I will give to and care for another. But first let me go and see why I should, what it will cost me, and what's in it for me. But first. It's as if we are backing our way into the kingdom while keeping an eye on the door. It's as if we are walking backwards into our future, not wanting to see or deal with what is before us. It's as if we have put our hand to the plough, but continue to look over our shoulder backwards. And it's difficult to plough a field if you are continually looking backwards and yet trying to keep the furrows nice I'm sure any farmer will tell you. I don't want to walk backwards through this life. I don't want to live, if you will pardon a very bad joke, a but first life. However, walking backwards into the future and looking longingly at what we leave behind. And I hope that you don't either. I want us to turn, face forwards, lead with our hearts, that deep heart that loves the unlovable, forgives the unforgivable, welcomes the stranger, gives without seeking a payback or even a thank you. I wasn't joking when I said it was a difficult gospel. I wish that I could resolve the gospel message in some neat and simple way, wrap it up in a bow for you, as much for myself, but I can't. It's not about resolving the gospel, it's about resolving ourselves, resolving our hearts. That resolution is not a simple or one-time decision. A way of being in this world, a way of relating to others, direction for our lives. It's a choice we make every day. It's the road to Jerusalem. And that means looking at the ways in which we are backing through life. It means naming the people and situations to which we have turned our back and acknowledging that we do sometimes live that but-first life. And I wonder what our lives and world would be like if we were to love, to give, to welcome, and forgive, unconditionally. I think it would be risky, scary, probably crazy. But as I look at the world, read the news, Listen to the lives and stories of others. The world is already a risky, scary, and crazy place. But what if we took a better risk, faced a better fear, and lived a kinder craziness? And what if we were to let that start with you and me today, in our lives, in our particular situation, and with whoever or whatever is before us. What if we were to lead with our heart and not but first? Amen.
we will stand and face forward to the cross to say our affirmation of faith in this God who wants us to walk forward into a kinder, better and unconditional future. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. We believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. This is the faith of the Church. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our third hymn this morning is hymn number 106. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, 106. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. (laughs) 
in the freedom of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Loving God, we pray that your Spirit will fill us with your love and enable us to share that gift of love with all the people we meet this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Joyful Father, we thank you for this beautiful planet we call home. We pray that we will do our best to be good stewards of all you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Peace, loving God, we pray for the places in our world where war is raging. We pray for peace. We pray for all the leaders of our world to use their powers of persuasion to work for peace, justice and truth. We pray too for all the innocent people affected by conflict that they will be treated with compassion and respect. And we pray especially the prayer written by our archbishops for the Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decision. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Patient God, we thank you that you will still love and care for us all, despite the many times we fail to serve you as we should. Help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to worship, honour and serve you, without counting the cost or being distracted by the cares of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kind and gentle Father, we pray for all who are suffering today, for the refugee, the homeless. We pray for the peoples of Afghanistan following the earthquake there, and for families who have lost their homes to fires, for the hungry, and we pray for all families in need who are being supported by food banks. We pray that they will receive all the help, support and encouragement they need. Wrap your gentle arms around them in their struggles, that they may know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Faithful and good Father, we thank you for your church throughout the world for the generations of faithful Christian servants, from your first apostles and followers, to our own congregations and leaders today. We pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to guide, strengthen and inspire all your people around the world, despite persecution and opposition. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Loving God, we pray for all who are in pain, whether that is physical, emotional, mental or spiritual. For those in hospital or at home, give them hope and confidence in your healing. And especially we name before you today David Chaloner, Joyce Newey, Pete Willem, John Hill, Jackie Inska, Molly Smith, Sheila Homer, Danielle Gawley, Ray Cole, Chantel, Evelyn, Rebecca, Wendy and Jermaine, Philip Stone, Ken Bradley, Brenda Poole, Helen and her family and friends. 
Encourage us to reach out to them with compassion and gentleness. And Father God, draw close to those we have named and make them aware of your loving arms around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died and whose anniversaries we call. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. And for those who have died, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, as we leave here today and strive to serve you this week, give us strength to love our neighbours as ourselves and the self-control to make sure that all we do and say would be honouring to you, our God. Gathering our prayers with those of St. Andrew, St. Peter, St. John and all your saints, we pray. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Collect for the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all your doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you are able, please stand for the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Our next hymn is hymn number 560. Will you come and follow me? 560.
we turn to page 8 to say the prayer at the top of the page. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon each one of us here this morning and forevermore. Amen. Please sit while I do some notices and some important bits. I've left it up there. I've left me noticing. I'll stay up here while I'm... Um, on the 2nd of July um, is the graveyard clear-up. As you know, it's the first and third Saturdays of every month. Um, starting at 10 o'clock, and normally we finish about 1, but if you can just give an hour or slightly more, then that would be useful too. Thank you so much. The next walk is on the following Saturday, which is the 9th of July. There's a sign-up sheet at the back uh, and a menu as well for the, uh, the Red Lion at Bobbington. It's, what I've been told, is a sample menu. I don't know whether it's the actual menu. They've also said that they will do sandwiches and we can have the children's menu if you haven't got a large appetite at lunchtime. But just let me know um, as soon as you can. Thank you. Um, the weekend away to Lee Abbey has had to be postponed until 2023. Um, it's a shame, but there you are. So if you are planning on going, keep the dates in your diary, because we'll be off uh, in 2023, God willing. And, important bit. I publish the bands of marriage between Jordan Cox, single of this parish, and Chelsea Delaney, single also of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the second time of asking. That's all right then. I also published the bands of marriage between Anthony Flynn, single of this parish, and Kelly Ann Poole, also single of this parish. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is for the second time of asking. Don't put your hand up. I thought you would get raising an objection. Well, that's good. Shall we just pray for these two couples? Lord, holy matrimony is a place that you have hallowed and honoured, where two people can be together as one. Sometimes a bastion against the world other times open and loving and welcoming. We pray that Jordan and Chelsea and Anthony and Kelly will find strength and happiness and love as they commit their lives one to another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Tea and coffee is 
after the service. Um, there is also a cake, because 40 years ago, to the date, but 40 years ago, to the day yesterday, Angela and I stood before these very steps and pledged one to another. Um, I've heard lots of jokes about being in prison and killing people, um, but um, please, if you don't want to stay for tea and coffee, then take a piece of cake home with you. If you do, then please stay. It would be lovely to speak with you. Thank you. Are there any birthdays? Do we deserve to sing to anybody whose birthday it is? Just check the book in case anyone's hiding. Ah, uh, Helen's not here, so we can't sing to Helen. That's it. Sorry. We will end our service with a hymn which is 321. Love divine or love's excelling. Three, two, one.
very quickly. If you see any vans up here on the 30th and the 1st, they are electricians. Finally going to get our lights sorted both in the gallery and in the chancel. So hopefully next Sunday we will have more light. And on that, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love, and to reflect God's glory. Amen.